Hey everyone, and welcome to the first edition of the Balkan League Loophole, where we're going to talk about the 12 Israeli league teams besides Maccabi Tel Aviv joining up with the Balkan League to play during the you know delayed coronavirus uh, season. Uh, joining me here is Josh Halkman, the sports rabbi. Hey, Josh. What's going on, AJ? How's it going? Not too much. You know, just finished watching the NBA Finals. Really exciting bubble playoffs. And, you know, things have been a little bit crazy here with Israeli basketball. We're, you know, for those of you who don't know out there, we're in the middle of a shutdown in Israel you know, due to coronavirus. And the Israeli basketball and soccer teams have been forced to not practice and not play unless they're playing an international competition. So, Josh, you want to tell us a little bit about the interesting solution the Israeli league came up with? So the Israeli Basketball League came up with a brilliant solution. It was just a fluke, really. One of the owners of the teams uh, was just joking and said to one of the other guys, you know, maybe we should join an international competition, like maybe the Balkan League, because years ago, the Balkan League, uh, not even that long ago, but in the past decade, Apollo Gilboa Galil took, took part in that competition. It's a minor European competition, but one that does have uh, some stature within the continental basketball world and uh from his mouth uh, to god's uh, you know it's god's ears they listened and they were like wow that's actually a great idea maybe we can pull this off they spoke to a few other people lo and behold three days later they had a big announcement on a friday afternoon that yes we are joining the balkan league 12 israeli teams are going to be participating in qualification matches with the top two teams eventually going into the balkan league itself but what this did allow is it allowed, like you mentioned before, the teams are now allowed to practice because it's a European competition. So, for example, Maccabi Tel Aviv, they play in the EuroLeague. They've been allowed to practice. Maccabi Tel Aviv soccer, they're in the Europa League. They've been allowed to practice. Bol Jerusalem, Paul Cholon, they're in the Basketball Champions League by FIBA. They've been allowed to practice. The other teams were going to be stuck. But lo and behold, this idea comes together. And uh, really, without missing a beat, the teams have not stopped practicing maybe a week or so there was a little bit of uh, uh, uncertainty and there was uh, less practices and some teams uh, just held off until they got the official word. But the Balkan League uh, sets us up very nicely with 12 teams. There are, uh, you know, th uh, you know, groups, four groups of uh, three teams apiece. And uh, off we go with this uh, great little tournament. Yeah, well, you know, Shai Strix, the president of the Balkan League, is actually Israeli. And if you go and look at the Balkan League's website, it specifically states that the purpose of the Balkan League is for teams in the Balkans who otherwise can't compete in international competition to have something to compete. So really, the position the Israeli League was in right now is the definition of why the Balkan League exists, is that these are teams yeah. that otherwise like, would be literally against the law of our country at the time to practice, have group meetings, to have games. And this really is an unbelievably creative idea to keep, you know, keep the Israeli Basketball League going, keep the teams operating, keep players in shape, and also for fans and people at home who really just watched every show on Netflix, watched every show on cable, and, you know, now the NBA is over, and soccer, they don't have soccer now, just to really give people something to do. Um, I wanted to ask you, Josh, like, uh, what do you think are some of the big storylines that we should be looking for in the coming games. You know, that we had the Winter League, or the Winter Tournament, I should say. That's the Winter Cup that starts before the season, where mm -hmm. uh, we basically had a replay of the playoffs from last year as a preseason uh, tournament. But that was canceled mid-tournament due to COVID-19. So teams have kind of been off, you know, besides Maccabi Tel Aviv that's not participating. Like, uh, Apollo Jerusalem and Apollo Tel Aviv had games in uh, – in Europe, like before the season, before uh, we've started now, what, what do you think is going to happen? Like, uh, what, what should we know? Things have been relatively quiet lately. Yeah, so I think there's some interesting storylines over here. Number one, I'm super interested in seeing how Paul Jerusalem is going to play. Now, why? Because they were just in Athens a couple of weeks ago for the Basketball Champions <sighs> League Final Eight, and they were absolutely taken apart by the eventual champion, San Pablo Burgos. How are they going to react to that, to me, is going to be extremely interesting. It was a devastating loss for management and the players. They didn't know what happened. And they have to now regroup 
to start seeing how they're going to put their season together, especially with a new uh, semi new roster. There are some players that stayed on, but there are injuries, of course, to Jacobin Brown. Uh, and they're going to start the Champions League 2020 2021 season coming in a couple of weeks. So they're using this as a type of a preseason for themselves. And this is going to be important games. They're going to be playing Maccabi Rishon Lutzion, which I got to see right before the break. Uh, playing in the uh, Winter Cup tournament, and they look great. Uh, they're a team that's only playing with three foreigners right now, but they have the up-and-coming star in Israeli basketball named Noam Dovrat. You've all heard of Denny Avdia. You've all heard of Yam Madar at this point. Both of those players have entered the 2020 NBA draft. Den- Denny Avdia, of course, has been slated to be a lotto pick, lottery pick, and Yam, uh, Yam Madar could be a pick at the end of the first round. Even in the second round, we're hearing these rumors starting to float through. But Noam Dorut is the next great Israeli player. He is going to be given tons of minutes from Coach Guy Goodis. And he said that even today in a press conference, that he is one of the senior Israelis on that team right now. And that's going to be super interesting to me to see how he's going to handle that pressure, especially now that the team isn't competing in the Euro Cup, which is one of the prime European competitions. So the Balkan League for them is going to be a serious European competition for Rishon Lezion. So right off the bat, those two teams are in the same group. I want to see them play, AJ. I think that's going to be terrific uh, for those two teams right off the bat. Yeah, I mean, in general, that group of Hapol Jerusalem, Maccabi Rishon, and Beersheba, like that's as close as you can get to, you know, the impossible group of this competition. Uh, I think in general for Jerusalem, I mean, the, things looked uh, tough in their pressure game that they lost in Champions League. But I think losing Jacobin Brown and James Feldine, it's really tough to, with an extremely difficult preparation, to, to come prepared for a game like that. It really is almost like a lottery shoot, like uh, to prepare in such a short period of time for basically to have playoff games to start the season. Um, I think this will be really important for them. I think they have a very strong and talented roster, but obviously things take time to, to build. Uh, I actually want to build on your point. You know, I think that Noam Dovrat and Yamadar are the two most interesting things to follow, especially if you're looking from outside of Israel into, into the Israeli league. Uh, Noam Dovrat, since uh, when he was in the juniors with Rishon, they played against Maccabi. Like, uh, he went heads up with Denny Avdia and was putting up games over 30, had, a, I think, a 40-point game. They got him some attention in the U.S. And he's last year got minutes in Rishon. And I could say from being a coach in the league last year that, you know, he, watching the video, you would never know that he was a 17-year-old kid. That kid is a smart kid, really high IQ. You, you could talk to him after the game. He seems like a grown man. Uh, he actually last year played in Rishon as that he was supposed to be in 12th grade, but he graduated the year early because he's just a really smart kid, even out, off the court. And, I mean, he's a great shooter. He's a great decision maker. I think if he can prove that at this level he can be a full-time point guard, it'll really improve his stock that even though he might not be the greatest athlete, I think his IQ, or, I mean, his, if he can really show that he can shoot and show that he can be a lead ball handler, I think he might have a future, you know, EuroLeague, NBA. I think this guy might be the limit for him. Yeah. He also has the build. He has the frame. And he's already filled out that frame. You looked at Danny Avdia before the coronavirus break. He was still filling out his frame. After the coronavirus break, you could see he bulked up and he still has plenty to go. So Noam Dovrat is a very big guard and he is built properly. He's built well. He's going to just get stronger as time goes on. So I'm super excited. You mentioned Yam Madar before. Hapol Tel Aviv is in a group with Bnei Herzliya and Hapol Haifa, right? Uh, So you're going to see there, you're going to see Yam Madar in action already, which is super exciting to me because we're going to get to see him against also two of the newcomers to the Israeli league, two of the new teams that came up from the Liu Meat League from the second division, Ben Herzli and Apol Haifa. We're going to get to see them play against one of the teams that has been a stalwart in this uh, this league for many years, which is Apol Tel Aviv. So I'm also super excited to see some of their foreign players as well, all those three teams, AJ. Yeah, I think Yamadar in the Champions League qualifiers was a, had a little bit of a mediocre showing. I think he could have shown much better a much better performance than he did. And for him, essentially, you know, in a normal year, he would have gone to pre-draft, would have gone to workouts, had interviews. That this Balkan League tournament essentially is the pre-draft workouts for Yam. So I think there's going to be a lot of pressure on him to perform individually. You know, as a point guard, let's see if that'll affect team success. 
or you know, let's it's, it'll definitely be very interesting to follow. He has a ton of talent and he's really got uh, a lot of guts. So it should be really interesting to follow along. Uh, you've actually been, I think, the only English language reporter during the COVID-19 restart and during the Winter Cup that had access. I remember I was watching your league, your yearly coverage that you were the only journalist that was waiting outside as the Maccabi players were coming yeah. in. So what, what can people expect? Not only like, the only... What were you saying, Josh? I wasn't the only journalist. I was the only... I wasn't the only journalist. I was the only person. It was just shocking uh, to be out there all alone uh, as the sun's going down. You're the only one there seeing the players. And usually there's people taking selfies and people getting autographs and people taking pictures and videos and just people milling around. That it was just, forget about being the only journalist, the only person out there that said hello to the players. It was just shocking. It was, you, know, you see the players drive up, their cars park, and unmolested they walk into the arena. Usually, you know, when they get out of that car, they know they're going to have an entourage of, you know, 10, 15 people that are going to walk with them into the arena. And that wasn't the case. Yeah, that's actually really sad to hear. Like, just, you know, for me, some of the best moments of my career have taken place in uh, Menor Mitachim Arena, whether it's that when I was working in Maccabi or even as a journalist or as an opposing coach or playing in tournaments, preseason tournaments. Anytime you walk in there, it's special. You feel the atmosphere, you feel the vibe. Like, uh, it's sad for me to think of having a yearly game and just not having that crazy atmosphere, that, that special atmosphere. Uh, but what, what do you think fans can expect? You know, Maccabi's not going to be participating in this, uh, in this competition. What, what do you think we should expect? The teams haven't really played for a while. There's not going to be any fans. Like, what, what, what should we expect? You know, I think you're going to see some rust, but I also think you're going to start seeing some of the players show what they can do. You know, you look at one of the other groups, Group B, for example. You have Naharia, Gilboa Galil, and Maccabi Haifa. Gilboa Galil had a phenomenal season last year. Uh, they still kept Yiftak Ziv, which to me was a great move. Um, on that side also, they just lost one of their foreigners, so they're only playing with three foreigners. Naharia also has only has three foreigners, not four that most of the other teams have. And Maccabi Haifa is also in a rebuilding stage. They have a lot of new players. So I see that you're going to, you know, on one hand, the fans aren't going to be there, but I think one of the benefits of this Balkan League is, is to try to get the rust off of these players. These guys have not played games. So I don't even, they're going to still look at this as a preseason. Uh, as, and, and they will look at it as, yes, there is something on the line for some of these teams. I can tell you, Maccabi Haifa, you know this very well. They love to go to the NBA for preseason. Well, this year that didn't happen, right? So the Balkan League for them is going to be their NBA this year. That is a team that's going to want to do well. Hapoel Gilboa Galil, they've done this tournament and they've won this tournament. They want to do well in this tournament. Naria with Danny Franco, that's a coach that wants to show everybody that, yes, my team is going to have a better showing than I had at the end of last season. Very disappointing end to last season for them. Team didn't get into the playoffs, and that was a team that made it to the State Cup final. So I think these guys, the fan issue is not going to be such a big factor here, especially in these first round games. Once the, the league gets going, I do believe you're going to see that they're going to be yearning for the fans, but I think it's still time. These guys know that it's still for them a preseason, but there is something on the line, AJ. You know, I'm actually interested to see because since Maccabi Tel Aviv isn't going to be taking part of this competition, I think that there's, you know, even though in the last little decade plus, other teams have been able to win the championships besides Maccabi Tel Aviv, and Maccabi doesn't win every game in the regular season like they used to back in the day. But I think having an additional competition with all the Israeli league teams without Maccabi Tel Aviv will make it interesting. We'll make it that any team on any, you know, can have a good year, build their team, and has a realistic chance to win a title. And it might not be the Israeli league title. It might not be the same title like beating Maccabi Tel Aviv. So I'm interested to see if this is just going to be some temporary loophole, some, some fix just for one year to get around the ban of practicing in the coronavirus, or if this is going to be something where maybe moving forward, multiple, if not all, Israeli league teams will take place in the Balkan League just to have – extra competition just to, to make things a little bit, you know, make things a little more interesting, give clubs yeah. something more to advertise to fans, to, to get fans riled up, to have more games. I, I mean, if we're 
learning anything during this COVID-19 crisis is that's the more games, the better, you know, like we're all wishing there's more yeah. sports games. Well, that's for sure. That's for sure. I mean, people want to, players want to play. They don't, they want to play twice a week. You talk to guys, I mean, you know this, AJ, you yeah. with West Siona. You know this very well. Those guys were thrilled to be playing in the Europe Cup, and you were thrilled to be coaching, and you were thrilled to go on those trips abroad, even though they were two interesting exotic places in Europe, we might add. But they were exotic, they were interesting, and they were exciting. And the bottom line is the players want to play. They want to play. There's, if you're a player, you don't want to play just once a week. You want to play as much as you can. And yeah, for some of the teams, this is a great benefit. Apole Lat, who for years, you know, did compete in a, a European competition. They're in a group with Apole Colon, which plays in the Champions League, and Nessiona, which you know very well. And they play in the, uh, the, Euro, the Europe Cup, which is going to the apparently FIBA start The FIBA Europe Cup, you have to be really specific. The I'm FIBA, a vet of that league. I've been three years in that league. <laughs> Yes, the FIBA Europe Cup. So you have also some teams here that want to, that have something to play for again. Uh, Brad Greenberg was the new coach of Nessiona. He has something to play for, especially now that the Europe Cup was pushed off. A a lot. They want to show that they can do some some things and they can make some noise, and they want to play twice a week, which is good. And Apollo Holon, they're going to use this as as a chance, and I believe for them this is a real big deal, especially, especially for Coach Deras. Uh, he likes to win. I know a lot of people like to win, but I know he really, really likes to win. And I think it's a really good chance for him and his players who love to play. And you're talking about Isaiah Miles and Tyrese McGee. These guys love to ball. They love to shoot their threes. And if they have more chance to play, the fresher they're going to get, they're going to, you know, they're going to brush off that rust. And I think this is going to be a great, a great little tournament, especially for most of these teams. Will all the teams enjoy it? Probably not because nobody enjoys that. You know, not everybody enjoys everything. But there are teams here that they're going to be gunning for this title and they have something to prove, AJ. Yeah, I mean, listen, Josh, I was putting my two-year-old through basketball drills today just because I'm itching to compete. So I definitely can understand that everybody wants to get back to play. Uh, but anyway, you know, I really want to thank you for your time. And anybody who's listening to this you should check out the Sports Rabbi on all, you know, social media platforms. He actually has a really great podcast on Spotify that I've been following. That he interviews players who, you know, play, playing in the Israeli League, American players for the most part, uh, go into their stories and, you know, guys with some really interesting stories. And I think if you're really looking for any sports media coverage in English in Israel or he even dives into other sports overseas, I think this is one of the best places to check. And, you know, Josh, really, thank you very much. And, you know, we'll be speaking soon, like always. Appreciate that, AJ. It was a lot of fun. And, folks, this is a great tournament. And I think it's a great benefit that Maccabi Tel Aviv isn't in it because you're going to see some other players come up to the forefront and shine. Time to pick a team, folks. Pick your team. <laughs> see how they're going to do and follow. Find a new star. Find a new player. If it's a foreign player or if it's an Israeli player, pick your guy. Pick your team. You won't be sorry. Appreciate you, Josh. We'll catch up next time.